Hello everyone and welcome to Sinful Gaming. I hope you're all staying safe, I hope you're all staying well, and most of all, I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today we've got another wishlisting video. The series is really kicked off and people seem to be loving just theory crafting and wishlisting along with me, which is fantastic. That's all I wanted to do with the series is create something for people to enjoy and people to just muck about and have some fun with while there's not really much else to do in the world. So um, today we're going to be looking at Ogre More Tribes. This one was requested by a subscriber in one of the chat and one of the comment sections. You can go request one and I'll get to it more urgently than others if you want. So leave some comments below if there's a faction or a particular topic you would like to see this like 10 things I'd like to see series go into. But we've got Ogre More Tribes today because someone has asked for it. So uh, let's just hop straight into it. And to start with point number one, plastic, saber tusks, and yetis. I love the Beast Claw Raider range. It is probably my more favoured part of the Ogre Moor Tribes range, personally. I have the old Thunder Tusk army sitting on the shelves there. Um, rip Thunder Tusks. Um, no, they're, they're okay. Um, but I would like to see like a plastic saber tusk kit and some plastic yetis i'm not personally a big fan of the current yeti models i do feel they're quite dated and quite um ugly personally i'm not a big fan um however i i like the idea of the aesthetic i i think with some modern sculpting making them maybe a bit more hulky like ogres you could really have some quite cool looking models there and saber tusk i actually really like the current saber tusk the only problem is there's like two variations of it so obviously taking out of the uh warband out of the question i think a new plastic kit looking like the warband saber tusk would be rather cool and so that's what i would like to see um going into point number two now this is an interesting thing and i think it's been said a lot by other people is the hungry and eating mechanics in the oak more tribe book is such a cool thing i really like the idea of it it's narrative it's cool it provides like good bust to the army I'd like to see the army delve more into it. For me, there's not enough in Ogres that really has to do with these this ability. I feel like um, if there were buffs and stuff that work from like wizards and stuff and like you can target hungry units to give them plus one attack or target eating units um, and stuff, just like different abilities playing around with that hungry and eating mechanic, I think would be really cool to do. It's it's the, it's the unique thing the ogres have in that they have two facets, they're hungry or they're eating. And so if you play around with that, I think you've got a lot of cool space to make some really cool rules. Now, obviously, rules-wise, ogres aren't going to get a new book for quite some time. I understand that. This is all just wish listing, so there's no right or wrongs in this, and I'd like to know what you want to see. Like, we could be talking about rules that might not come out for three or four years, and, like, that's every chance that'll happen, you know? But... I'm just going to give all my wish listing stuff here. Uh, number three, I like to see the prayers upgraded a bit. For me, they they are they just fall flat. There's not really a lot to it. I have quite a few husk guards on thunder tusks, and the prayers just don't do much, if anything at all, and don't really give me a chance to use them to influence the battle. I feel with the prayers, we'd see probably more thunder tusks hitting the table than we do now. It's a bit sad. Like thunder tusks were one of the lists you sort of went and took. When you were looking at Beast Claw Raiders, there was the fourth Thunder Tusk list and people were playing around with that. So I think um, maybe if the prayers were a bit better, we might see the Thunder Tusk and the Husk Guard on Thunder Tusk on the table a little bit more. Point number four, going back on my Thunder Tusk, if you can't tell, I really like Thunder Tusk. I love the model of the giant woolly mammoth bear thing, elephant, whatever it is. Um, give Thunder Tusk back the six model wins flat. Now... There was a time in Age of Sigma where that six mortal wounds flat from a Thunder Tusk was just horrific and devastating. And like I'm not saying give it back on a two plus, but I think like the ability to do flat six mortal wounds isn't an ability that needed to go anywhere in that current time because there's so much more in the game. Like six mortal wounds is nothing compared to what it used to be in the game. I mean, we just need to look at the terror guys to go. Well, that dude does six on everyone, and he's got multiple attacks and can buff them by D three and stuff like that i don't think the six mortal wounds from the shooting from the snowball from the thunder tusk needed to go anywhere personally i think you could bring it back it would bump them up a little bit it wouldn't make them op in any way they're they're quite a ways off being that this 
and I've already gone through multiple points that I think we have to take with Thunder Tusk to get them to a uh, better state than what they're currently in. But I think the six mortal wounds just coming back, it it, it, it was fine. It, it wasn't a bad thing. You can probably change it around so it's not quite so uh, automatic, uh, shall we say. But uh, I'd like to see it come back. Number five, I'd like to see a multi-part man to kit. The man eaters for me, the current models are fantastic. The pirate, the ninja, even the female, uh, whether or not it's female or male dressed in drag, um, I don't quite know. <laughs> it's it, But the paymaster to the uh, Arabian themed one, um, they, they are fantastic models. They are some of the most characterful and amazing models in all of Games Workshop. I love the man eater models. I think though, if we were to make a multi-part kit and just give all these different weapon options to man eaters and like be able to go nuts with a really cool multi-part ogre kit, I think would be really cool to see. And not just that, like adding on to that, I think changing the rules up for man eaters. So like maybe you've got a unit of six man eaters, but they all have different rules. They don't just take the same generic rules. The dude with the ninja sword has like a special weapon rule for that, but then the dude that has the uh, anchor and a pistol has different rules for him and like you can equip your man eaters differently it just to me is such very similar it'd be somewhat similar to like i guess how you could do something very similar to how you see like storm fiends armed for skaven with the man eater kits you know every three you can have one of this two these two variations one of these two variations one of these two variations putting six different variations in the kit and you can mix and match that um would be quite cool i think Point number six, expand the Noblar range. Noblars are cool. They provide something and narratively, like it's a really cool thing that like you have this sort of menial race around the ogres that sort of do all the stuff that ogres can't really do. It's quite a cool sort of thing. Um, I was when ogres were released and sort of uh, when, uh, what's his name? The Goblin Wolf Rider Gitmob lot was released for Warcry, hoping that potentially maybe Gitmob went into and took over sort of the Noblar part for the Moor Tribes. I mean, the whole Hunnish sort of aesthetic that the Gitmob have uh, sort of fits the Mongolian themes that Ogre Moor Tribes have. I think um, expanding upon the Noblars gives them a bit more options. You know, you could go for a light cavalry option of wolf-mounted Noblars or um, bring back something like Noblar Trappers and like a scouting sort of Noblar unit, um, which could be cool because that could combine with the Hunter and the Saber Tusks and the Gorges. And we certainly got this uh, really cool mechanic of like an ogre army that actually has some decently sized units that can come in and movement shenanigans. But I think that's that's a range I'd like to see touched on. I'm like, maybe even a Noblar hero model. Who knows? Um, it could be quite cool. I like Noblars. I think they're a unique part to the ogres. It's a, it's a cool little thing. Uh, point number seven. I want to see a bigger monster. Thunder Tusk and Stone Horns are cool, but ogres are big. I want to see a big monster i want to see a monster that is an ogre compared to the thunder tusk and stone horns making them look like the humans um i say this in most of my videos that i just want to see something big really but who doesn't like big giant monsters um it's amazing i don't know what it would be like maybe some sort of like giant frost bear thing um or even like do we dip into like owl bears um maybe um like a frosty giant owl bear, who knows? It's certainly um, room to play with. I think that's the cool thing about Age of Sigma is expanding into these weird and wacky monsters that you just wouldn't see normally in a general fantasy game. Point number eight. So we're getting a little bit into my narrative here. Um, you've got the Fire Belly who is fire, and you've got the Beast Claw who are ice. I think you've got a really cool potential for some disharmony within the ogre faction. I always I spoke very highly of the fact that Skaven are a faction that does personal disharmony really well. Um, they make games f in amongst the parts of the same faction mean a lot more because they just show that there's not this loyalty to an entirety race. And ogres, I feel very much the same. Like tyrants beat up other tyrants all the time. And imagine if there was some sort of cultural war behind it that maybe there's these fire ogres and there's these ice ogres and you've got this fire versus ice sort of thoughts behind them it'd be 
an interesting sort of look into ogres and like these two different ideologies and uh, worships going at the ogres and sort of maybe creating some sort of rift as well. Obviously not splitting up the faction, but like I, I do find um, disharmony within a faction or reasons to have disharmony within a faction. Like it doesn't need to be disharmony that's so that breaks the faction apart at its core, but it can be that it's, uh, we don't really like you and uh, we don't really like you, but we fight together because we're both ogres. So that's an interesting thing for me to go down. Um, number nine. So we've got the Hunter and we've got the Frost Sabers, which is really cool. What if, um, no, we've already got, like, technically they're already in the army. You've got them on the Husk Guards. What about Blood Vulture models? What about packs of Blood Vultures? So flocks of Blood Vultures coming in on the board edges, like, very similar to Saber Tusks and providing some sort of, like, a far-reaching role and, like, a high movement unit the Ogres don't really have. Um, I think that'd just be a cool little thing to have in the Ogre Army, personally. And my last point, number 10. The one thing I feel more than anything that the Ogres are lacking in the current narrative is a figurehead. So I mentioned in the Gloom Spite one I did that you've got Scragrot as sort of the head um, of the Grots. And so he sort of represents, I was talking about him potentially representing Mork, you know quite a bit cunning, a little bit fighty, and then Godrak, quite a bit fine, a little bit cunning, uh, representing Gork. So where do the ogres fit in here? They don't have a figurehead of their own. There is no named characters outside of the Shadespire warband um, that have rules and that have an impact in the narrative in any real big sense for the ogres. I think giving them a figurehead, someone who is like, I like what Grease's gold tooth used to be back in Warhammer Fantasy. Someone who leads them as an overseer, like why not potentially direct control over every ogre in existence. They provide a ability to have massive influence. So it's sort of the whole, no ogres want to go against war against this massive ogre tribe that it leads them. So maybe someone from the Meat Fist more tribe that sort of leads um, and is the biggest of big tyrants. And so the other tyrants sort of don't really like respect him and like don't really try and cross his path but anyway that's 10 things i'd like to see from ogre more tribes i'd like to know what you guys would like to see from ogre more tribes i'd like to know what factions you'd like to see me touch on uh in the future or what subjects you'd like to see me touch on we'll eventually run out of factions so we've got to do something else with the series so that'll be something to work on but for now don't forget to like the video don't forget to subscribe to the channel stay safe stay healthy and most of all, keep fighting that war against the great. Thank you to everyone who's been supporting the channel and enjoying these videos. I hope to be punching out many more soon. So, catch us all later. Ciao for now.